Yet also that there is so much that divides us. As a Jew and as an American, I care deeply about the state of Israel. Observant Jews pray about the land of Israel, not just when we were at synagogue, but also every time we eat. My grandfather grew up there after his family left Warsaw. Most of them who stayed behind in Poland were murdered in the Holocaust. I have many relatives in Israel all over the country, and I follow events in Israel very closely, as do many American Jews. I love Israel, not just because it is our religious homeland, and not just because of my family roots there, but also because of the principle that it represents. The state of Israel stands for me for the idea that an oppressed people can take control of its own destiny and build freedom and prosperity with nothing more than faith and hard work. It is the same idea that builds America. That is why our two countries are so close and will remain so. I know that for many Muslims, Israel presents not just a political challenge, but also a theological problem. Islam, in my understanding, is tolerant towards Jews and Christians, but does not consider them as equals and does not countenance Jewish or Christian sovereignty over land that was once ruled over by Muslims. Many Muslims want to live peacefully with Israel and even within Israel, but many Muslims do not. At a fundamental level, that dilemma may be impossible to resolve, yet there is a way, I believe, to find a peaceful accommodation in spite of enduring differences. On the road from Tel Aviv to Haifa, as you gaze up at Mount Carmel, you see a beautiful mosque with twin minarets. It is an Ahmadiyya mosque in the town of Kababir. It is a reminder not only of the diversity of Israel, but also of the diversity that exists within the Islamic world. I have followed some of the debates that Ahmadiyya Muslims have had with other Muslims. I know that Ahmadiyya Muslims have often been persecuted in the Islamic world and that there are those who attack the Ahmadiyya community simply because it has a presence in Israel. There are some in the Ahmadiyya community who have tried to defend themselves by saying that Ahmadiyya Muslims can be just as hostile to Israel. I understand the temptation of that approach. There are Jews who believe that the best way to deal with anti-Semitism or anti-Jewish prejudice is to show there are Jews who can be even more critical of Israel than anyone else. But rather than appease those who hate, I believe the best way forward is to stand up for the principle of diversity as a fundamental feature of human nature that must be honored, nurtured, and protected. And which Imam spoke about so movingly this morning as he gave us a tour of showing us the tree and the different branches of the Abrahamic faith. Just as Ahmadiyya Muslims must find tolerance within the Islamic world, so too must the Jewish state find tolerance within the Middle East. Tolerance does not resolve the theological or political issues at stake. It poses, in fact, new political and theological problems. Yet it is a way of moving forward without allowing our differences to destroy us internally or externally. It may even lead to new opportunities and new understanding. The important thing to remember about tolerance, I believe, is that this is a two-way street. It is not conditional. My tolerance of you does not depend on your tolerance of me. But tolerance is not something that can be demanded by one side if it is not something that is prepared <coughs> to be shared and reciprocated by the other side. In other words, we cannot demand tolerance of intolerance. That is true in the Middle East, and it is also true of the United States. The ongoing controversy about the quote-unquote Ground Zero Mosque is a case in point. The fact that people have the right to build a house of worship does not necessarily mean that it is right to do so in a particular place. The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution prevents the federal government from getting involved in such decisions once local authorities have spoken. Yet I would urge those involved in the Park 51 project to build it elsewhere. The organizers insist that they want to promote tolerance. Yet that cannot change the fact that although many Muslims opposed the 9-11 attacks, and there were Muslims who were victims of the attacks, the attacks were carried out by a few who claimed to be acting in the name of Islam. Now there is no way to guarantee that the problem that some intent is a symbol of tolerance will not be viewed by others as a symbol of triumph. Americans are still deeply wounded by what happened on 9-11 and will remain so for generations. We are not ready as a nation to turn our wound into a symbol of universal tolerance as it is and will always be a symbol of grief. We should be allowed, I believe, to grieve in a way that is our own, that is independent of the claims the world might make of us, even if the site that was destroyed was once a place for the world to gather. It was our place. It is not intolerant to believe that there are limits to tolerance. In fact, that is what gives tolerance its value, to know that it is not just moral relativism where principles are cast aside but that it is motivated by a spirit of generosity and sacrifice. But that is what I have learned, not just by living overseas in a Muslim community, but living here in America, in my hometown of Skokie, which is one of the most diverse places in the world, and the United States. The secret to the harmony that exists among people of different faiths and backgrounds in the 9th Congressional District and across Chicago is that we share many values and interests in common. More specifically, we understand that there is an opportunity for all of us in a growing economy, in 
communities where businesses can begin and grow, where jobs can be created, and where public authorities can provide good services to all. When jobs are scarce and public services limited, that is when people begin to divide into groups, to feel insecure, and so we seek strength in numbers to make sure that we have access to building resources. But when our economy grows and there are jobs available, and tax revenues are high enough to guarantee good services, then we are willing to reach out to each other. That is why job creation is so important to me. The issues that Jews and Christians and Muslims care about are the same issues that all Americans care about. In my campaign, I have emphasized creating jobs, repealing a bad health insurance law, and protecting America and our allies. I know that we may differ about how we achieve those goals or even what they mean, yet we must always be willing to listen to each other. Thank you for allowing me the chance to listen to you and to be heard. Shukran Kathir. Thank you very much. <coughs> So we want to respect people uh, getting back to work. Uh,